in addition to the other folders that I described in my previous video, there's one more folder which I kind of skipped over, and that is this folder with the name T. So T stands for test, and the idea is that as we're developing Phylota, um, we're going to get a, a more and more clear idea of what different parts are supposed to do, how they are supposed to fit together, what different objects are going to be able to do, and so on. And um, we're going to have to verify that. And actually, we're going to do this in kind of a cart before the horse kind of way, which is called test-driven development. Uh, the idea being that we first create a test where we sort of predict what certain behavior is supposed to be, and then when we run that test, it'll fail. But then we have to create the code that makes it so that the tests pass. Right? So let's say we have some general idea of how we would like the um, geocoding surface, so the locality taxonomy getter, how we want that to behave. And then we write a little script where we put in the code as if that locality taxonomy getter already has all that behavior implemented. Then if we run the test, we'll know, well, it's failed. But then the mission is clear, because then we know, okay, now we just have to do this, this, and that, so that the tests then pass. And I started doing that a little bit. Um, so there's now five little test scripts in here, and we'll just go over them. So the first one here, config.t, is the uh, test script for the config object. So these test scripts all have pretty much the same sort of general layout. So they start by using test more, and that's a uh, module that uh, exports a couple of functions that make it easier to test for things. And in this particular script, there's also another module that we're using, which I'll explain later on what it's for. Now, with test more, there's a couple of functions that become available in our test script. And uh, for each of those functions, um, we basically, they basically give a little environment within which something has to be true or false. And if it's true, then the test passes. And if it's false, the test fails. So for example, there's a function called use OK. So you can see here at the top, there's these use statements where we import certain modules. But there's also modules that we are creating, such as this config object. And we would like to be able to test whether that use statement for that module is uh, OK. So let's say if we want to use it, is that going to work or do we get some weird error message? So we test that with use OK. Then to create a new object, we would typically use the package name and then the arrow operator and then new, and that returns a new object. Now new OK tests that step. So it tests whether we are possible to create new objects that come out of this uh, config package. So these are the first two tests already. Then in the config.ini file, there was a couple of um, keys that are directories, right? So, for example, there's a key for the directory that contains the GenBank flat file uh, sequence archives. And there's a directory with the NCBI taxonomy and a directory for FASTA files. There's two directories that the cluster is going to need. There's a uh, directory for scripts. There's a directory for uh, NCBI Blast, so this is where your local Blast is installed. Uh, 
and this is um, the directory where the head node in the cluster so the one that is directing the slaves uh, can put its own uh, work files so we have a list of directories and we loop over that list and uh, here uh, we're first checking to see if the directory names don't start with the word slave so these two and if they do we just skip over the test because we haven't yet configured this whole head slave uh, architecture yet but for any of the other ones we can first test if the variable has been defined and then with this dash d we test if the directory exists so dash d is like a Perl syntax for a, a directory test and by the same logic uh, we can test for a bunch of files so here we have a list of files and uh, we iterate over that list of files and you might remember that we hadn't yet uh, received the scripts for blast to blink so we just skip over those but for all the other ones we first test if some file name has been provided and then with dash f we test if that file actually also exists um, now here at the top there's also uh, we also use net ping and that is because there's also two places in the config file where we uh, define some domain so one is just localhost but could be somewhere else where our database is uh, uh, deployed and uh, the other is uh, for a server that I don't quite know yet what it's for it's called Seiba and uh, I guess maybe it's our uh, the cluster in the Sanderson lab or something like that and uh, with net ping we can uh, ping the server just like you can ping things on the command line and um, just to see if the domain is actually up right so now I've switched to a terminal window and in my terminal I've uh, created the environment variable phylota home so I could just cd into the phylota home as you can see here so now I am at the root of the folder uh, and on my laptop that is um, inside my Dropbox so now if I want to run one of these test scripts I might for example do Perl t conf config.t so that's for this script uh, let's see what happens okay all the tests passed you can see here the ones that we are skipping for now but all the other ones seem to be fine the variables have both been defined and the actual locations exist um, so the config object apparently is um, performing as we were hoping it does here's another very simple one where we just test to see if we can use and instantiate the uh, schema DAO um, later on as the behavior uh, is be a bit more fleshed out I guess we would have more tests in here but for now this is probably all we can do um, this tests also whether we are connected to the database so first we try to use the dbh database handle package then we try to create a new database handle so that's the object that's returned here and that handle also has a method ping which checks to see if we're connected to the database correctly and then we uh, query the handle for some common variables that it needs to know about so the host where the database is running 
this special string that the DBI uses to connect to databases, the name of the database, so that would be probably Philota, what the relational database management system is, so MySQL in this case probably, the username and the password. And so the main thing about this test is that this shows that we can actually connect to the database without having to put username and password and MySQL and everything else hard-coded into every script because it just comes from the config object. So if we test that, then you can see um, that all the tests pass. If I just clear our screen again, here we go. So we can use the handle, we can create a new object, and we can connect to the database. And then these variables for host, DSN, database, RDBMS, user, and pass are all defined. Now here are some uh, two test scripts that are going to be failing. So one of them which is very simple looking as well, is for um, testing the uh, documentation coverage. So the idea is that eventually all the code that we write, all the subroutines in that code, is all going to be properly documented. You know, what's the subroutine for? What are the inputs? What are the outputs? And what are some errors that might happen or some other side effects? Um, but uh, we haven't yet written all the documentation and we need to start early with that so here we have a test that is going to nag us about that so if I run that test um, then oh my god a whole bunch of errors right So it shows that, for example, on the config object, there is no pod plain old documentation. So test one is not OK. Similarly, test two is not OK. There is, first of all, no documentation at all. There is also one naked, undocumented subroutine, the new subroutine. So test two is not OK. Not okay, test three, four, five, etc. So all of these different modules have no documentation on them. Um, and we need to do something about that. Then here's a related test, which doesn't so much test for coverage, but it tests to see if the syntax of the pod documentation is done correctly. So let's try that. And you can see that actually, so the syntax is fine to the extent that, well, there is almost no syntax in any of these files, so there's not much to mess up. Except here in one of the uh, Philota legacy scripts, there is an error here. And we can see here that it's in script, Philota pb crawl ncbi model dot new dot pl line 11. So let's see if we can see what that's all about. Was it this one? No, this one. Right, so here at line 11 starts the pod directive, which is the beginning of the documentation. And after each of these directives, there needs to be a blank space because now it'll just concatenate pod with this sentence here. Be sure to enable email warnings because otherwise it's hard to detect the occasional VMEM errors. There needs to be a line break in between there. Actually, there also needs to be a line break after uh, line 38, or a blank line after line 38. So that's what this complaints about. 
So um, this is sort of how we keep ourselves in check by uh, running these tests. And uh, the way I showed it now is to run them individually. So for example, by typing out the name like this. But actually, we're going to do this using the make file again. So here's our make file again. Here we go. So we type Perl makefile.pl. Now there's been a new file that was created here, this make file. And if we just print the whole thing to stand it out, you can see that it's quite large. Uh, but this is all auto-generated code, again, that we don't really need to look at. One thing that might be interesting to look at is this stuff here in the post amble section. So this is the stuff that comes out of our template. So here in the same folder there was this makefile.template. And if I just write that out, you might see the parallels here. So here in the template we say setup, echo configured for gen bank release, and then the square record percentage thing here, where we insert the current gen bank release. So this is the result, right? So here it just inserted the number 184. And uh, likewise, all these other variables that are in the template are uh, filled in here in the actual make file. So that, for example, if I uh, type make setup, it'll just echo out this message because that was the only thing that was going to happen for the setup target. But so here's how that works. Um, but in addition to these to these few targets here, like setup and taxonomy and schema and DAO and load dump, um, the make file also has targets in them to run tests. So once we've created the make file, we can type make test. And then what it does is it runs all the tests in a row. You can see here that it did the config test, then the DAO test, the DBH test, those were all fine, but then the pod coverage is all messed up. And then actually the pod test, which checks for syntax, was also messed up. So we can see here at the bottom, we failed two out of five test programs and 19 out of our 123 subtests have failed. So we need to work on those. And that is what uh, test-driven development is all about.